David, the youngest son of Jesse, was anointed as king by the prophet Samuel in Bethlehem. This anointing marked the beginning of his journey to becoming the great king of Israel. At the time, King Saul was ruling, and David's anointing was a secret event known only to a few. David and Goliath One of the most famous episodes in David's life is his battle with Goliath. A giant Philistine warrior, the Israelites were at war with the Philistines, and the two armies were locked in a stalemate. David, a young shepherd, was sent by his father to bring food to his older brothers, who were soldiers in Saul's army. When David arrived at the camp, he heard Goliath's taunts and threats against the Israelites. Filled with faith in God, David volunteered to fight Goliath. He refused to wear Saul's armor and instead took his shepherd's staff, a sling, and five smooth stones from a brook. With a single, well-aimed stone, he struck Goliath in the forehead and killed him. This remarkable victory made David a national hero and endeared him to the people. Friendship with Jonathan David and Saul's son, Jonathan, formed a deep and loyal friendship. Jonathan recognized David's greatness and even helped him escape when Saul sought to kill him out of jealousy. Their friendship is a significant aspect of David's life. Fugitive from Saul Saul's jealousy of David's military successes and popularity led him to attempt to kill David on several occasions. David became a fugitive, living in the wilderness and avoiding Saul's pursuit. During this time, he gathered a group of loyal followers, including the prophet Samuel. Saul's death and David's rise Saul and his sons were eventually killed in battle against the Philistines. David mourned their deaths, and his genuine grief demonstrated his respect for Saul. Despite the king's relentless pursuit, after Saul's death, David was anointed as king over the tribe of Judah, while Saul's son, Ishbosheth, was made king over the rest of Israel. David's unification of Israel A civil war erupted between David's supporters and Judah and supporters of Ishbosheth. Over time, David's forces gained strength, and he gradually united the northern and southern tribes of Israel under his rule. Eventually, Ishbosheth was assassinated, and David became the king over all of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant One of David's first acts as king was to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. The Ark represented God's presence. And David wanted to establish Jerusalem as the religious and political center of the nation. In a joyful procession, the Ark was brought to Jerusalem, and David danced before it with all his might. David was a young shepherd and musician when he first came to the court of King Saul. He was chosen to play the lyre for Saul, who was troubled by an evil spirit. Jonathan, Saul's son, and heir to the throne, soon developed a close and genuine friendship with David. The Bible describes their friendship in several key passages, such as 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 to 4. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic, and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. This passage illustrates the deep bond between Jonathan and David. Jonathan's love for David was so strong that he was willing to protect and support David even in the face of his father Saul's growing jealousy and attempts to kill David. Jonathan warned David about his father's intentions and helped him escape several times. Their friendship is celebrated for its loyalty, sacrifice, and genuine love between two individuals. It is often cited as an example of the kind of profound friendship that transcends external circumstances and challenges. In the end, both David and Jonathan met tragic fates. Jonathan died alongside his father Saul in battle, and David lamented their deaths in a heartfelt eulogy found in 2 Samuel chapter 1 verses 25 to 26. Despite the difficulties and political conflicts surrounding their lives, their friendship remains an enduring symbol of devotion and love. King Saul, who was the first king of Israel, initially favored David and even made him a commander in his army. However, as David's reputation and influence grew, Saul's attitude toward him began to change. Saul became increasingly paranoid and sought to kill David out of fear that David would usurp his throne. David's flight from King Saul involved several key events, Saul's jealousy. Saul's jealousy and paranoia over David's popularity and success reached a point where he attempted to kill David on multiple occasions. These attempts included throwing a spear at David while he was playing the harp and sending him on dangerous military missions in the hope that he would be killed in battle. David's fugitive life. Fearing for his life, David went on the run. 
He fled from Saul and lived as a fugitive in the wilderness, often seeking refuge in caves and remote places. During this time, he was joined by a band of loyal followers who became known as David's Mighty Men. Interactions with Saul, there were several encounters between David and Saul during this period. One particularly famous incident occurred when David and his men were hiding in a cave, and Saul entered the same cave to relieve himself. David had the opportunity to kill Saul but chose not to harm the anointed king. Covenant with Jonathan, despite his father's hostility, Saul's son, Jonathan, maintained a close friendship with David. The two made a covenant of friendship, and Jonathan helped David by warning him of his father's intentions. Saul's death, the conflict between David and Saul continued for several years. Eventually, in a battle against the Philistines on Mount Gilboa, Saul and his sons, including Jonathan, were killed. David received the news of their deaths with great sorrow. After Saul's death, David eventually became the king of Israel and ruled over a united kingdom. His time as a fugitive and his experiences during his flight from King Saul are significant aspects of his life and are recounted in the biblical books of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. King David's Desire King David, before his death, expressed his desire to build a permanent house for the Ark of the Covenant, which had been kept in a tent since the time of Moses. However, God told David that he was not the one chosen to build the temple because he had shed much blood in his lifetime. Instead, it was promised that his son Solomon would undertake this task. King Solomon's Construction After becoming king, Solomon initiated the construction of the temple. He received assistance and resources from King Hiram of Tyre, a neighboring king. Skilled craftsmen and workers were involved in the project, and the construction was a grand undertaking. The Temple's Features Solomon's temple was known for its grandeur and was designed to house the Ark of the Covenant. It was built with expensive materials like cedar and gold. The temple included the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was placed, and the Holy Place. The building was adorned with various intricate details and decorations. Dedication and Significance Once the temple was completed, Solomon organized a magnificent dedication ceremony. It was considered a central religious and political symbol for the United Kingdom of Israel. It served as the primary place for worship and sacrifices to God. Destruction Unfortunately, Solomon's temple was not meant to last forever. In 586 BCE, the Babylonians, under King Nebuchadnezzar, destroyed the temple and took many of the Israelites into captivity. The destruction of the first temple marked a pivotal moment in Jewish history. Rebuilding After the Babylonian exile, the second temple was eventually built in the same location. It was not as grand as Solomon's temple but served as a significant religious center for the Jewish people. The story of David's desire to build the temple and Solomon's construction of it is a key part of biblical history and remains a fundamental aspect of Jewish and Christian religious tradition and God made a covenant with David through the prophet Nathan. In this covenant, God promised that David's descendants would rule Israel forever. This promise is a significant element of the messianic hope in the Hebrew Bible. David's military campaigns David was a skilled military leader and expanded the borders of Israel through successful campaigns against various enemies, including the Philistines and other neighboring nations. The period of his reign marked a time of relative peace and prosperity for Israel. The Bathsheba affair One of the most troubling episodes in David's life is his affair with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, one of his loyal soldiers. David saw Bathsheba bathing on a rooftop and was overcome with desire. He arranged for her husband to be placed in the front lines of a battle, where he was killed. David then took Bathsheba as his wife. God was displeased with David's actions and sent the prophet Nathan to rebuke him. David repented and acknowledged his sin. Despite the forgiveness he received, the consequences of his actions haunted him throughout his life. David's family troubles David's family life was also marked by tragedy and conflict. His son Absalom rebelled against him and tried to seize the throne. The rebellion led to a painful civil war, and in a tragic turn of events, Absalom was killed. David's grief over the loss of his son was profound. Preparation for the temple David had a deep desire to build a permanent house for God. But God told him that he would not be the one to do it because he was a man of war and had shed blood. Instead, his son Solomon would build the temple. David made extensive preparations for the construction of the temple, including gathering materials and organizing the levites and priests. David's final years and death as David grew old. His health declined. His son Adonijah tried to declare himself king, but David had promised Bathsheba that her son Solomon would be the next king. 
Nathan and Bathsheba informed David of Adonijah's actions, and David quickly fulfilled his promise, anointing Solomon as king. Solomon's reign began while David was still alive. David died at the age of 70, having ruled Israel for 40 years, seven of which were in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. His death marked the end of an era and the transition to Solomon's rule. David's legacy King David is remembered as a man after God's own heart, a gifted poet and musician, a brave warrior, and a wise leader. He established Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and laid the groundwork for the construction of the temple. He also wrote many of the Psalms, which are still beloved and widely read today. His life and reign are an essential part of the history and faith of Israel and continue to be a source of inspiration for people around the world. Please subscribe my YouTube channel I hope you like this video thank you.